Right, that's the glory days rock show. Rock music in all its forms. Great forms. Cool. Yeah. And you can hear it any anywhere you like. It's on FM, it's on Freeview Channel 7, version 159. Well, I'm Sankey Tabasadev and I'm um, the chief executive of Sheffield Live and also a founder member of it. Um, Sheffield Live is a local community media organisation and we run a radio station on 93.2 FM and we also run a TV station which goes out on Freeview Channel 7 and Virgin 159. Basically, um, Sheffield Live broadcast its first broadcast in 2000. Um, what ended up happening is that there's an area of Sheffield called Sharrow and it's in the west of the city. Um, it was one of the most deprived wards in the country, um, but it's a very diverse cultural space um, and it's a really vibrant space as well. It's got lots of sort of cafes, pubs, bars, um, lots of restaurants. You can go to a different part of the world every day to eat. Um, so it's a really sort of exciting place. And what they do is that once a year, they hold a community festival. Um, and there's lots of music, lots of food, lots of stalls, lots of activities. And what they wanted to do was that they wanted to do something special for the year 2000, because it was the beginning of the millennium. They knew that I'd been involved in radio before. So they came to me and said, look, can you help us do like a festival radio, basically, um, for the festival? And so that's what I did. I went out and got some funding, we bought some equipment, and then I did training with local people in all sorts of skills around radio broadcasting. So from technical stuff through to um, being DJs, through to presenting, through to thinking about how to put together a radio programme. What we were absolutely astonished by was the response to that broadcast. It was absolutely massive. Um, obviously it was people in Sharrow who had done it, and at that time it was actually called Sharrow Live. Um, but the re response throughout Sheffield was just mind-blowing. You know, everybody wanted to do something like this, everybody wanted to get involved. But the thing was that at that time, um, community radio wasn't recognised, so the only things that could go on air were BBC radio stations and commercial stations. So what ended up happening was that every time there was a festival or an event happening in Sheffield, we were getting approached and saying, can you help us do a festival radio? basically. So eventually in 2002 we actually started streaming on the web and nowadays you won't even think anything about it but in those days that was quite pioneering and groundbreaking. Um, we were definitely the first in Sheffield if not one of the first in the country to start sort of actually streaming. And eventually in 2004 the law changed and community radio was in introduced as a third tier of broadcasting. Um, and at that time, we, um, when it was eventually announced that licences were going to be issued, we applied for the licence for Sheffield um, and we got it. Um, and we've been broadcasting full time ever since, that was in 2007. Um, and so we're the, that was the first new radio station for Sheffield since 1974. So for 33 years, we were the first radio station to actually hit the airwaves for Sheffield. My name's Rob Cottrell, um, but my DJ name is DJ Ski. That uh, goes back to when I used to do youth work. Uh, and there was a Channel 4 programme with a DJ called Norm Ski. Um, and the young ones uh, at the youth club started calling me Rob Ski or Bob Ski, so I just took it from there. Um, and I, I play um, an old reggae music show, uh, old reggae, ska, mento, rocksteady, uh, um, everything from like the 60s, 70s, 80s um, era uh, and it was just a show that I, I just started to do when, when my father died in 2007. I took his 45 to 7 inch singles, my brother took his albums and I just was doing some voluntary work on Sheffield Live and uh, just decided to create a show. I wasn't a DJ at the time, <laughs> never played music in public before um, but I gave it a go. So yeah, I was, doing a little show. I was trying to help my son who was a, a budding artist at the time uh, and I thought I'd try and get some voluntary work down here, you know, and learn how to project his voice uh, um, on the mic and to do it in a slightly different way than performing lyrics uh, so, so he could learn some new skills and I came down with him. Um, he didn't take to it and then I continued working and I started working on the uh, Communities Live uh, uh, lunchtime show uh, and just continued from there. I'm into my 14th year now, I think we're 14 years um, in May. Uh, I, I started the show just by playing records, um, 
but then because I wasn't really a DJ, I decided to, to change. It was easier to play the MP3s and, and CDs. Um, but then after a while I thought, now I can play a little bit. Let me see if I can go, go back to the records. And that's what I did. So I just play records now. I don't play no MP3s, no CDs. Mm -hmm. And just try and get that original sound. Many of the 45s, they've got you know, crackles and hisses in them. Uh, um, but that's the authenticity of, of the sound for me. I mean, I've even heard CDs of late where they're putting crackles and, uh, and hisses in there to make it sound uh, more authentic. So you can't get more authentic than playing records. So that's what I do. The best thing is, is the freedom. Of course, you know, I know there's limitations. You know, I've got many records, you know, with swear words in or of uh, sexually explicit uh, content. Of course, I know I can't play them, but I, I come here uh, from 3 till 5 every Sunday and that time's just mine. I can just do what I want, you know, um, play whatever in any order. Uh, and But the biggest thing for me, what I get out of it, is that it's, um, it's a nice bit of... Um, material for the soul you know uh, all music for me is soul music because it gets you uh, inside so it's, you know, it works on my mental health keeps me up to keep me calm uh, and it's just a, a great well i think it's a great two hours anyway but covid has been it's been an absolutely dramatic uh, effect which for me is gives me playing records more importance you know because it's um you know it's a show where i i encourage my audience to engage you know they send me texts or or, or WhatsApps, uh, and we engage. So I have a conversation, you know, through records. To some people's irritation, but it's about having a, a conversation. So people know that I'm here, and I know that they're out there, uh, because the show it's a community radio, and the show's not for me, although it helps me. But the show's for the community, and of course we're on the internet, so it can go worldwide. So now I know I've got listeners in in Ukraine, and I had some listening last week. So I'm hope, I don't think they'll be listening this week. But you know, I've had you know listens in Cuba, in Jamaica, in Poland. Um, so yeah, this radio. I mean, I've not worked on other radio stations. I've done some work for uh, BBC Radio Sheffield, uh, um, but not having worked on another station as a DJ. This is the only one I've worked at. But what here, it, it's a real, it's a family atmosphere here. You know, everybody who you, when you do see people, they they get on. And when I see Sangeeta, she always has time. I know she's extremely busy. That she always has time to say, "Hi, Rob, how are you doing?" You know, and she does. It's not just a passing question. You know, she's really interested in how the volunteers are and how they're feeling. People are very friendly. Everybody will help you here, and that's what some people need. You know, now I'm in a position where if anybody comes in and they need my help, I can help them. You know, I've I've been learnt a bit now. Um, but anybody who wants to get involved with Sheffield Live, all they have to do is get in touch. You know, or send a request or a comment via the uh, um, the, the website. Because we're always looking for volunteers. Uh, there's always someone out there who doesn't think that they've got any skills or know-how, who have got some tremendous abilities uh, out there that they could contribute. They could come here just to practice the trade until they might go on to you know uh, uh, bigger and wider things. Who, who knows? But this is really uh, a great start into community radio and getting to understand you know, how radio works and, and what it takes to get that going. You know, I've, I've been involved in the working party to get us uh, onto the uh, uh, DAB um, and <laughs> the work that, that, that Steve and Sangeeta put into that is just absolutely immense. People don't realise, I mean, people come in here, they see a nice studio, it's kitted out nicely uh, and all I've got to do is bring my records, set up and play. But it takes a lot of work in the background uh, to, to get it to that point. Um, I don't have those technical abilities. But I, I've got some ideas, but I don't have the technical abilities to, to make all that work. But yeah, but for me, it, it, it works like a family. I know I can contact Sangeeta at any time if I've got an issue. Um, and she'll get back to me as soon as she can. Well, my name's Julie Meese and I've been volunteering at Sheffield Live since I retired from Sheffield City Council uh, almost three years ago. And you're going to say I'm too young to have retired, but I was lucky enough to spend quite a lot of years working there. And when, when I retired, uh, I really wanted to give something back to the community. So uh, I volunteer here at Sheffield Live radio station. I also volunteer at Wentworth Woodhouse Preservation Trust in Rotherham as a, a, a volunteer gardener. So quite interesting. Um, so my involvement here, we were very lucky indeed. Uh, 
we were in a band so we used to give our original music to a guy called uh, Paul Gregory who had his own show here called This Is PG. So he used to play our music. Now we've particularly enjoyed, although we love the music show, I think we've really enjoyed doing the live science radio show because it covers such a lot of things and it's about getting information out, public service information often. And uh, particularly during COVID, we still do a COVID-19 update and we've continued that throughout uh, lockdown. And some people have said, I just collate all the information from say the Times, the BBC News, and I summarise that in, in a simple as simple way but an informative way and quite a lot of people have said it's been the easiest summary or to understand every week of what actually is going on without getting having too much and hearing too much if you like it, it can be quite uh, bogged down but it's fantastic and you get to meet l lots of other presenters the shows are really really varied and you get to I think with the community radio station, because it's so diverse, you get that real broad range that you probably wouldn't get on a commercial station. And I do know that people have gone on from presenting on Sheffield Live to actually working for commercial radio stations. So it's a great way to learn. We've learnt from uh, Paul and we've learnt from Graham and, and that's all part of it, really. Well, my name's Graham Marshall and I've been... I think I must be one of the oldest volunteers or longest serving volunteers down here at Sheffield Live. The current show I do now is called Glory Days, which is taken from a, a Bruce Springsteen track name, which seemed appropriate because it doesn't say exactly what sort of music it's going to be. That gives us the flexibility of going through any genre we feel like at any point. And I've been doing that show now for pretty much four years. And initially, when my eyes were better than they are now, I could pretty much run the show myself with just a little bit of help on the technical side. But as the eyes have gradually got worse and worse, I need to rely on other people to do the shows with me. And I'm more just talking and generally putting bits of shows together prior to shows. And then while we're actually on air live, because all our shows are live that we do, uh, that our show does, um, I just I can't really do anything towards the show. I just have to know when I've got to come in and put my bit in and play my bits of music. And the team I work with are both, uh, well, there's four in total in the Glory Days team, and they're all very, very good and they help me through. And I fell in love with the place. We were originally across in the hubs. That was where our studio was when I first joined. And uh, I slotted into it just straight away. I loved every minute of it. Great team of people. And uh, really, I've been doing that pretty much almost constantly ever since. Back then it was just on the internet and then eventually we got an FM license, a full FM license and uh, that's when we got serious about what we were doing. I went on a proper course, in fact I went on two courses about community activity and also radio pre presentation and all this sort of stuff and uh, I did a number of shows. I did one show that specifically aimed at the sight impaired community and I got them all listening at the local blind society and having their input into it. And that show still technically goes on now, although I left it about six, seven years ago to someone else to, pre to present and produce. But uh, Sheffield Live, ever since I got in the door, I've always loved this place. I love the staff, the management. They're not, they're, I mean, the staff is the management. They're, most people are volunteers here. And uh, a great bunch of people, always willing to help you. And I've always been willing to help other people as well. So it's a, it's a community. And it really has enhanced my personal social life a lot. You know, from doing this, it's led on to all sorts of friendships I could not have had before, both in the music world and just generally, people are volunteering here. In 2012, the government announced that there was going to be local television um, and Sheffield Live applied for the Sheffield licence. Um, and that was like a, what they call a beauty contest, so basically it was a competitive process. Um, two commercial, very well funded stations and us applied for the licence um, and we won that one. So we've, we're one of only 34 TV local stations in the whole of the country, basically. And Sheffield Live is the only station, except for the BBC, that has both a TV and radio licence. There's no other um, organisation in the country that has that. Um, so that again is training people up and giving people the platform to make TV programmes if they want to do that. Um, then the other thing which is an um, exciting thing that's coming up is that the government announced that there was going to be a new tier 
in broadcasting, radio broadcasting, and that's what's been called small scale digital audio broadcasting. So there's been digital audio broadcasting for years. Um, but it's been very prohibitively expensive. So we looked at wanting to go on DAB back about 10 years ago um, and we were quoted £65,000 for a year for a mono signal. Now most of us would want to stay your signal so you're talking about you know, £130,000 just to broadcast. What's happened is that that um, technology has now come right down um, and some uh, sort of socially minded technicians um, in Canada basically worked out how to you know make the software really cheaper and everything so what that's resulted in is the UK government basically saying that they're going to be issuing licenses for small scale um, digital audio broadcasting um, what we're going to be able to do is rent out basically up to 25 bits of frequency and channel to different um, radio broadcasters. We are also now talking to a number of different stations, including the student station Forge FM, about them possibly being one of those tenants. My name is Katie. Um, I am from Sheffield originally. Um, been a big fan of Sheffield Live, uh, so it was great to have the opportunity to for me and the collective I'm part of, which is called Gut Level, so we're um, a Sheffield-based collective and we um, like champion people that are underrepresented in the music industry. Um, we've got a little venue as well. Um, so yeah, so that part of our um, output is like doing things like radio. So we did, just before the pandemic hit, we'd done a few shows uh, live in the studio, which was super exciting, because I think to get that kind of real life experience like obviously when you're doing radio shows a lot um you often pre-record and things like that but to actually be in like in a live setting is like much more exciting um so it was great to it was great to yeah have the opportunity to do that with with chef live which was just the station that i'm 28 now and like all like all my kind of life i can remember like just switching uh sheffield live on and yeah it's always you never know what you're gonna get which is nice and it's really the kind of like true real voice of the community in a way and I think that's really quite rare. I think there's not that much community radio now and a lot of the community radio you get is kind of more around um, it's more around the music side of things which is really obviously I'm a big, a big fan of music and a lot of my life centered around music but the idea that actually it's I don't know you're kind of getting which I feel live it's more about it's people cultures as well and giving a chance for people to really like their story and their voice really, which I think is, is super exciting, quite rare really now. There's not, you can kind of got more freedom in the kind of community radio situation, there's less kind of pressure really, which I think is great for like emerging people to have that opportunity. Yeah, so the, 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 the main thing about Sheffield Live is that it is a community station, that's continued to be the case. So what we do is that we train local people um, who live or work in Sheffield um, in radio skills, and then we get them to, um, have their own programs. So what we have is we have programs at the moment in five different languages. Um, we have community of interest programs, so we have programs which are by and for people with disabilities, we have programs for the LGBT plus community, and obviously people, it's not only people from those communities that are listening to the, the, the programming, it's people in general who are listening to the programming. We also get people from all over Sheffield coming in and making programs as well. So it's a really good place where people who wouldn't normally meet each other actually do end up meeting each other and then coming up with ideas for programs, coming up, you know, making music together. But the feedback again that we've had from people about the radio station and what it's meant to them um, during the time of lockdown, was, it's really been very moving, you know, that people have just been saying, if it wasn't for the radio station, I don't know what I would have done. I'm not sure I would have been able to make it through. Um, you know, we've had people saying that they found it even when you know lockdown's not happening and they're finding it difficult to go out, but that is the station that's kept them going. Um, so yes, it was very challenging. A uh, majority of people are still producing from home now. Um, 
but you know we were getting out a lot of public health information to people we were getting that out in different languages to people yeah i mean sheffield live is um you know a really exciting station and if you've got program ideas and things then get them through to us at the moment we're still all working remotely so it's probably not going to happen as quickly It'll get you in and getting you trained up as we normally would do it but you know, definitely if you're interested in getting involved, then, you know, get involved with Sheffield Live, that would be fantastic.